Just after her 17th birthday, Ashley Martinson decided to take her own life, and then, in a split-second decision, two other people would be dead. But was it really so split-second after all? There is some Facebook post that Ashley had posted the day before between herself and Ryan Sisko, where she talks about Thomas and that she should just take a gun and shoot him. Specifically, she wrote, I want to kill him so expletive bad, just take one of his guns and blow his expletive brains out. One day later, that's exactly what she did. Does that make this premeditated? In my mind, yes. She had thought about it and then carried through with the act. But the full context of the message may tell a slightly different story. Sent on the morning of what should have been a special day, Ashley's 17th birthday. It began. I woke up this morning to my stepdad beating my mom. I can't take it anymore. He's gonna kill her if she doesn't leave soon, and I don't wanna be around when that happens. So is that evidence of a teenager just blowing off steam or evidence of a teenager who ends up actually carrying it out? And that's what you have to look at. I mean, her comments were basically about um, the abuse that her mother was receiving from Thomas and that she was concerned Thomas was going to kill Jennifer. And so her remark to that was, I should just take a gun and kill him. Then this would be over. And certainly there was more evidence to suggest the killings weren't planned. The fact that Ashley had just turned 17, how pivotal was that to how she would be treated by the criminal justice system? In the state of Wisconsin, when you're 17 years old, you're considered an adult. Had she been 16 years old, she could have been waived into the juvenile system. And how close was she to this deadline? One day. Ashley Martinson is initially charged with two counts of first-degree intentional homicide and three counts of false imprisonment for trying to lock up her sisters. And what about those sisters, now orphans because of what Ashley did? Were they mad at Ashley for killing their parents? Yes. How did they express that? They asked questions like, is she in jail? Is she gonna stay in jail? Things like that. And then there were the letters the girls wrote to the judge. Their letters are very interesting. I remember being so scared when I heard my mom scream. I'm glad she didn't hurt my sisters. I thought she was going to. I think she should stay in jail until she rots. You met these girls. Is this from the heart? I believe that they are scared, very scared of Ashley because they can't put together the Ashley that they knew and the Ashley that was there the last day of their parents' lives. But in her own letter to the judge, Ashley wrote, even though I have made my sisters into orphans, I know deep down that they are now in a more safe and loving environment. I do hope that one day they will be able to forgive me. At her arraignment and facing life in prison, Ashley pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. But not long after that, her attorneys struck a deal, reducing the charges to second degree in exchange for a guilty plea. I think that, and the district attorney obviously agrees that it wasn't premeditated or he would not have agreed to drop the charges to second degree. Though the prosecution asked for a maximum sentence of 40 years, she received 23. To some, it was too light for such a horrific crime. Still others thought Ashley deserved way less. Is it wrong that some people have compassion for Ashley? I mean, I myself feel sad for her to have grown up in such a bad situation. But my job is to hold people accountable for crimes. If every child that lived in a home that had abuse in it killed their parents, there would be a lot of dead parents. Today, Ashley Martinson is serving her time at Tachita Correctional Facility in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Since being transferred there roughly six months ago, she's received no visitors. But that was about to change. So when I first got assigned this story, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know the girl behind the headlines because I thought, could this girl be this dark or is there just 
a victim behind all of this. So I wrote to Ashley in prison and she wrote me back. And she said that she wanted to tell her story, that she was finally ready to tell her story. Unfortunately, our cameras weren't allowed in the prison. But what Ashley told me inside those walls was too important to not be heard. So after working with administrators and Ashley's social workers... Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... Ashley. An inmate at the Teichita Correctional Institution. We arranged to have Ashley call us. Thank you for letting me have this opportunity to tell my story. Up next... I'm sorry, this is, this is hard. It's really, really hard. In her first interview from behind bars... I remember stabbing her once and twice. Ashley Martinson reveals startling new details about that fateful day. When I pulled the trigger, boom, in that moment, I felt the chains break around me. 